I'm Lisa from Pink Hollybush Designs, and um, thanks to the wonders of technology, welcome to Connecticut and my sewing studio. I'm here today to give you a couple tips on smocking with knits and to um, show you some Pink Hollybush patterns and some different samples. I started Pink Holly Bush Patterns um, a few years ago with a focus on helping sewists to smock garments, um, on, particularly on knits, so that busy mamas didn't have to iron them and children would love to wear them because they're so soft and comfortable. So with that, let's talk a little bit about sewing, uh, smocking on knits. So the first thing to know is to pick the right fabric. I have two types to recommend for you. The first one is a cotton jersey that is 95 to 97% cotton and 3 to 5% spandex elastine lycra. Now, spandex elastine and lycra um, are three different names for the same thing. It's spandex in the US, it's called elastine in Europe, and lycra is the trade name um, given to it by the DuPont Corporation that invented it in the 1950s. And it's added to that cotton jersey to give it a greater recovery and um, four-way stretch if, if they're trying to achieve four-way stretch with the garment. Now the second um, fabric that I would recommend is a 100% cotton interlock. So either of those um, fabrics are a medium weight net, they're appropriate and will hold up to the wear that children are going to give them. These two nets will go through the pleater like butter and they'll hold the shape of the pleat well. Um, other types of nets, like a bamboo or a rayon net, just have too much drape and the pleats end up all wonky and are very difficult to um, stitch on. Plus, the fabric just that's more of a slinky knit it's just really not appropriate um, for children's wear all right so we found the perfect net now it's time to pleat our fabric so i have found that the sizing in the knit helps with the pleating so i like to pleat the fabric before i pre-wash it at the same time nets can shrink now I found that they usually only do that in length and at usually only by a half inch, but what my recommendation is, is that you cut the skirts before you pre-wash, that you go ahead and pleat, construct your garment, and then pre-wash it just before you hem it. That way, You'll, any shrinkage will happen before you do that final hemming. Now when I cut my um, skirts, if you are worried about that shrinkage, cut the skirts an inch longer than the pattern um, tells you to. When I figured the yardage for pink hollybush patterns, I was generous. You have that extra inch um, if you lay out the pattern carefully. Um, to cut your skirts a little bit longer so that um, if it shrinks on you a little bit when you wash and dry it, you'll still be fine. Okay, so now it's time to pleat. I have a whole video on my website that shows you exactly how I pleat nets. I'll actually write it on the video here as well. So, um, but you can go take your time, look at that and see exactly how um, I am pleating knit. It is very easy to do. Now I'm often asked, um, should I interface the pleats? And my answer to that is, okay, again, should you interface the pleats? Why? Knits are bulky. 
they stretch and they are heavy. The last thing you want to do is to add to that bulk. Now you probably don't think of a knit as heavy, but a quilting cotton, your regular quilting cotton that you make um, quilts out of, weighs 115 grams per meter. A cotton jersey is 210 grams per meter, and interlock is 225 grams per meter. That means that a cotton interlock is almost twice as heavy as a quilting cotton. So again, you do not want to add to that bulk. Um, let me give you another visual. So this picture is a photo of khaki puppies um, by Creative Keepsakes. I have a sample for you. And here they are stitched on this little May Garden jumper. And I hope you can see these are some pretty plump puppies. So again, you don't want to um, add to that bulk by putting any interfacing in it. Um, I have tried it. I've experimented with different knits doing it. It's horrible. Okay, so just take my word for it or try it yourself, but do not interface um, the knit. Um, if you use the cottons that I've recommended, as I said, you'll find that the pleats have enough structure to get a beautiful result smocking on them. All right, so we have our piece pleated and now we're ready to start smocking. So the first step is to have the right mindset. If you go into smocking on mats and you want that preciseness and that exactness that you can achieve with a woven, you're probably going to be frustrated. Knits have that wonderful stretch, um, but working with it is just a little bit different. It's, it's hard to get that full, beautiful coverage with your smocking that you can get on a woven. But this is not the heirloom garment that is going to be handed down from generation to generation. This is the play dress that she is going to beg her mother to get out of the laundry so she can wear it again. It's the dress she's going to throw on and wear everywhere. So be kind to yourself and just embrace the difference. So how can we get the best result and that the best coverage? So my first tip is use four strands of floss for a geometric and five for picture smocking. Okay. Again, because those pleats are bulky and you're trying to get good coverage. If you're using an interlock, which this little um, jumper is, and remember is even a little bit thicker and bulkier than um, the jersey, you might want to smock with five strands for a geometric and six for an interlock. And this, um, I'll show it again, this is five strands are used on that cable stitch and on these waves down here. And six were used for the puppies. Um, if you are using five or six strands, then you might want to try a number five or a number three darner rather than that net number seven with your smocking. You um, want the um, hole of the needle to be large enough that every strand can lie side by side without getting smushed. <laughs> and you want the hole that the needle makes in the fabric to be large enough that it's not smushing all those strands that are going through as well. Now, um, the next tip is to always um, strip and squeak your floss. 
If you're not familiar with that, let me demonstrate what I'm talking about. So um, in my needle, I have um, four strands of floss. I have separated each strand and then just um, threaded my needle. And I have a piece of craft felt. This is, you know, just the ordinary inexpensive felt you pick up everywhere. I've wet it and I've wrung it out so it's just damp. And you're just going to run the thread through there like that. And I think you can see, or the flosh through there, I should say, sorry, um, how it's nice and flat and lined up by doing that. Um, it's called strip and squeak because if you Sometimes you can hear the squeak when you pull it down through. I am not good at getting the squeak, but that's where the name comes from. So I do recommend um, as tip number three that you start with a geometric smocking rather than picture smocking. Picture smocking on a knit is more difficult because you're trying to get that great full coverage. Um, as you saw with the puppies, it can be done, um, but I would start with the geometric first. Um, knits have that wonderful stretch that makes them so comfortable, but smocking on them can be a little bit like playing the arcade game whack-a-mole. Um, if you remember that one, you have to pound the mole down in the hole and while you're pounding it down, they're popping up in the other holes and you're trying to go around whacking those moles. Um, with the knit, if you are a tight smocker, when you um, pull down on your stitch, that stretch of the knit is going to let it spring up in between your stitches, just like those little moles do. So you want to ease up on your tension. So to sum up, use an additional strand of floss. Make sure you strip and squeak your floss. Um, start with a geometric smocking plate rather than a picture one and make sure to ease up on your tension. If you do all those things, you will have a great result with smocking on knits. Now you might be wondering, can I use um, my normal woven pattern with a knit fabric? And the answer is generally no. Patterns need to be made specifically for knits because of that bulk and that stretch that the knits have. Okay? The edges need to be supported in a way that still allows for the stretch to occur. Um, the bulk needs to be minimized and a pattern that's appropriate for a knit tends to be a simpler garment with less design details because of that bulk and that stretch. Knit patterns will um, support those edges with the bindings rather than facings. The bindings are usually smaller so that they can pull in and keep that knit from um, losing its shape over time. You will also find that pink hollybush patterns are, um, have the smocked piece sized differently for a knit versus a woven. All right, so let's look at some patterns. The first one I wanna show you is honey. Now honey is um, a workhorse of a pattern. It's your basic yoke dress in a knit. Um, there is, are no closings, it's just pull on over the head and go. So honey can be made in a short sleeve version or a long sleeve. Okay. And honey comes with a high yoke, okay. so you can smock right below it, or Honey comes with a dropped yoke as well. And this particular one was in the um, summer 2020 of Classic Sewing Magazine if you're interested in the designs. But as you can see, you don't need to smock any of the dresses. They all can be gathered. So this is the gathered option of honey with the dropped yoke. If 
after all of this, I haven't convinced you. If you're nervous about smocking on the nets, I do have another option for you. And that is this honey. Um, honey can be made with an insert. And this insert is broadcloth. So it's a knit dress, and this is also an art gallery um, fabric, with um, a smocked insert on the broadcloth. And the honey pattern explains to you how to do this. Okay. So the next pattern I want to show you is not a dress, even though know, that's what I've been talking about, and that's twirly skirt. Now, twirly skirt, this little one was in the fall um, 2020 issue of Classic Sewing Magazine, and this also is an art gallery fabric. So this um, can be smocked front and back if you like, and it's got an elastic um, back. And by the way, all pink hollybush um, patterns have pockets. So let me show you the pockets. If you smock the back, you can't put the pockets in. But here are, um, find my pockets. There they are, because every little girl needs her pockets. Now, truly skirt can be made in both a net or a woven. So this is actually a woven. Let me show you a couple other twirly skirts. This is the net um, just gathered. So if you know your um, daughter or granddaughter, if you want a really quick, um, easy to put together and you don't want to smock it, you can go right ahead and just gather it. And um, I want to show you this one. I love this one. This is actually a fine whale cord um, that it's made out of. So cute. Now, Rosie um, is the latest pink holly bish pattern. Uh, Rosie was in the um, holiday 2020 issue of um, Classic Sewing and also can be made with long sleeves or this is a rosy top with um, the short sleeves. Rosie can um, also be made in a woven like twirly skirt can and so this is a woven Rosie and Rosie um, is smocked on both the back and the front. Of course you could choose to just gather the back if you didn't want that much smocking and um, again Rosie has her pockets <laughs> and I have saved the last one um, and that is the Make Garden Jumper, and that's this little one right here. And let me show you um, a couple other samples. Make Garden um, is sleeveless, as you can see. It's big enough that you can put a top underneath it, but it, it is sized, the armholes come up high enough that um, it can be a sleeveless um, jumper as well. Um, again, here's an unsmocked version. May Garden has two different necklines. So this is the scoop neck, and this is the boat neck. Okay. And our little puppies that you've already seen is also a scoop neck. Now, I hope I've... Um, convinced you to give sewing on knits a try and smocking on them. If you need more help with sewing or smocking on knits, there is an online course for each pink holly bush pattern. Okay? If you're interested in seeing what they are like, there is one more pink holly bush pattern I haven't mentioned to you, and that is the July flowers. Now, this one is not for knits. This is only for wovens. The construction for this dress, um, on my website, you will find the entire um, series of videos that go through how to make every step of this pattern. It is completely free. Um, with the other ones, they up the other patterns. As I said, there is a course for each one of them. I hope you will give smocking on knits a try, and I hope um, you'll give pink holly bush patterns a try. So um, have a great day, and happy smocking. Bye-bye.